Okay, so I wrote this story about Justin Fields for FoxSports.com. You should go check it out. It's a magazine feature. It's like 3,500 words, and I made a video over at Fox Sports, or I should say CFB on Fox on the YouTube. You can check the community tab for that. All that to say, I got to talk with Yvonne Fields, who was hella cool and just telling me stories about his kid. One of the stories he told me was they went to the Tennessee camp. And at these camps is where you get these, you know, you get your offers if you play well. So he's 6'3", 225, runs 4'4", four, four in the 40, and then he goes into the quarterback line. They see him throw, and Butch Jones is doing everything he can not to salivate because he's got Emory Jones standing next to him. Emory Jones is a top four-star dual-threat quarterback who was picking between Tennessee and Ohio State at the time. So you can't actually offer Justin Fields in front of him. Otherwise, you're never going to win Emory Jones, right? Because that's disrespectful. It's mad disrespectful. That's being engaged to be married and then going to, hey, go up to this other woman and be like, you want to marry me? No, nah, it's not going to go over well. It's not going to be all right. So he's watching Justin Fields go through this thing at Tennessee, knowing that this kid is only two and a half hours away and going, damn, I can't even offer this kid because I didn't even know this kid existed. Emory Jones ends up committing to Ohio State, Right. But by signing day, Emory Jones had flipped his commitment to Florida. So he's at Florida, where he expects to be the starting quarterback when Kyle Trask kind of just gets offered and comes up over there as Felipe Franks is still going through the motions. Felipe Franks blows out his ankle against Kentucky last year. Kyle Trask comes in, become Kyle Trask. Emory Jones looking at everybody like, ain't I the highest rated quarterback on this depth chart? Yeah, dog, and you still can't get on the field. As Kyle Trask was backing up Dear King, at Manville, he didn't even play, and they still gave him an offer, and he still ended up in Florida because he ain't that good. All to say, that dude, Kyle Trask, is a way better quarterback than the dude starting for Georgia, Stetson Bennett, who was also the dude that was the scout team quarterback for Georgia trying to give Roquan Smith and them a look as they get ready to play Oklahoma in the damn Rose Bowl. It's the only time in Stetson Bennett's life where he's going to be in the same conversation as Baker damn Mayfield. But here he is getting ready to start against another top 10 opponent. He ain't got no business doing that. He walked on to Georgia the first time, got ran off to junior college, came back as a walk-on, expected to be the fourth quarterback on the depth chart. Store brand Cam Newton, a.k.a. Jamie Newman, opts out. But JT Daniels had transferred in. He's coming back from ACL. They say he's cleared to play, but he ain't cleared to play, so I don't know who to believe on that one. I just know the dude was a five-star quarterback and threw for 67 touchdowns in one damn season of football at modern day. And then they got Carson Beck back there, who was one of the most highly rated 2020 quarterbacks in the class. And you're going to tell me that Stetson Bennett is the best you can do. Worst part about this is Todd Grantham is a sorry defensive coordinator when it comes to doing anything other than dialing up blitzes. And says he's going to hit the engage eight play about four times during this world's largest cocktail party. Stetson Bennett is not going to be able to stand in the rush and see the rush. And he's going to throw two interceptions against a team that is down to the security guards at safety because of COVID restrictions. I'm excited for this game. (laughs) I'm so excited for this game. Because these coaches are willfully sabotaging themselves. Like Kirby Smart, for the second time in three years, has looked at the better quarterback and said, hey, I want to keep you in reserve. <laughs> I want to throw I want to throw out this vanilla white boy <laughs> to be my damn quarterback. No one can't make me no plays. And Florida fans got to deal with Jake Fromm never lost to them. You know how bad it's going to be in Gainesville if they lose to Stetson damn Bennett? This is all part of the pro-chaos movement. I, like, I'm so glad that we, we, we can count Dan Mullins as one of us in our ranks. Because it's, it, takes a, I mean, it takes a lot to look at. It. Like you said, we got... I consistently put the second best quarterback on the field all the time. I'm rolling the dice. I like the degree of difficulty. I like playing on, I don't even say I like playing on super hard mode. I just like to see the numbers do what they do. Like I'm watching Stetson Bennett against Alabama and I'm thinking to myself, yo man, if JT Daniels is playing this game, y'all have a chance to win it at the end. Instead, you got Stetson Bennett quite literally running from Alabama to 
defenders because he knows they're going to kill him and throwing the ball right as he's in the referee's ear saying something like blow the whistle. <laughs> All right. I put it this way. No matter what happens in the election, if Georgia beats Florida, that is what will burn Florida down. That, that's going to be it? That's going to be it. Like when you, okay, so when you say that's going to be it, talk talk more. So losing the Georgia Oh, hell, and I forgot Dwan like Mathis started the season. My bad. I'm sorry. Dwan, he is the third best court. Like, Dwan Mathis was the starter, and he got pulled in the first half. Stands a bit in his throwing interceptions. Dwan Mathis can't get back in the damn game. Anyway, I'm sorry. When, I cut you off. Damn. No, no, you, you good. I just, it's just one of those, like, <sighs> Florida's been waiting for the come up for a while. They, they're, I, oh, I hate talking about this year football so much. Oh, why? <laughs> it's so much fun. Because it's. No, like, because it says, like, I want to say, ah, oh, well, you know, they're a good team. It's like, nobody's a good team. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> so, knowing that Florida is continuing trying to be the the, uh, the king of the East, losing to Georgia, who I don't think is a bad football team, I don't know if that puts them in a, yeah, this is over with. We've, we got, we got to shut it down. Time to blow it up. Is is that what you're saying? Uh, is, that, is that what you're saying? I say the loss to Texas A&M is why we're here, right? Because as much as you don't want to lose to anybody in the SEC, nobody wants to lose to Ampersand U because Ampersand U fans are insufferable. Like, they're they're awful, and they haven't won a damn thing since 1939. Do you know how obnoxious they would be if they were good? And to know that they would be good would mean Florida beat Georgia, which is the transitive win for A&M to beat Georgia, right? But... I'm looking at this and going, people are saying Clemson is sketch, right? Because they go down 18 to Boston College, down 15 at half to Boston College, and they end up winning that game. However, nobody wants to talk about how Ole Miss and the Lane Train put up 48 points and 647 yards of offense. So when you say nobody's good, the only team right now that is quote unquote unblemished, like hasn't had a poor half or a poor outing, might be Ohio State. But you can make an argument that they got ran over by Nebraska, 200 yards rushing they gave up, and Nebraska ain't no good. And they gave up damn near 300 yards passing to Sean Clifford and parts as Jahan Dotson was mossing Sean Wade, who was supposed to be a first round draft pick at corner. So, no, ain't. Nobody no good. That's kind of the fun of this, right? There is no Clemson Voltron juggernaut of 2018. 